All right, hopefully you finished the first two problems, checked your work and got them right. Let's talk about three and four. And again, these are gonna use that equation, the distance equals rate times time. Um, I always think of the magic triangle, so the distance is in the top, rate times time, and uh, we'll have to solve to figure some things out here. But let's look at number three. It says a bus travels at six kilometers um, an hour less than a passenger car. The bus travels 80 kilometers in the same time that the car travels 112 kilometers. Find the rate of each. All right, let's set up a little chart here. We have bus, we have car, we have rate. Let's start with distance, rate, and time. Okay, the bus travels a distance, it says, of 80 kilometers. So the distance of the bus is 80. The distance of the car is 112. Now it says the bus averages six kilometers per hour less than the passenger car. So we could say x here and then x minus six. Okay, take the rate of the car and subtract six from the rate. Personally, I like to figure out which, I always ask myself, which one is going the slowest? And in this case, <clears throat> the bus is going the slowest, and so the car is six more than the bus. For some reason, my brain just works better doing plus something. And that's the way the score key has it, so it'll just make it a little easier to check our work. But the other way should work, okay? So if you want to leave it as x minus 6 here and solve your work down, just be careful that when you get done that the x represents the time of the bus, okay? Now, how do we express time? Time is distance divided by rate. So we can write this as a fraction 80 over x, and then this one is going to be 112 over x plus 6. Now what does it tell us? Do these two times equal something? Oh, in the same time. <clears throat> so whenever you see that term, in the same time, same time means they are equal, all right? So notice then once I put this equals this, now we can just find the common denominator, x, x plus six, and distribute it times the whole equation, okay? So here the x cancels and you'll have 80 times x plus six, and then over here the x plus six cancels and you have 120 times x and you just solve for x. All right, and then you can go back and interpret that. So we did the hard part on that one. Sometimes it's just thinking it through and getting the equation set up, and then you can finish it. All right, number four, the rate of one plane is 80 kilometers an hour less than that of the second. If the first plane takes six and two-thirds hours to travel the same distance that the second plane travels in four hours, find the rate of each. All right, what should we do? Plane one, plane two, distance, rate, time. Okay, let's go back and see what it says. The rate of one plane is 80 kilometers per hour less than that of the second. So we're talking about the rate here. So if this is X, then this plane is 80 less than the rate of the other. Rate of one plane is 80 kilometers an hour less than that of the second plane. So we could leave it this way and just leave the x minus 80 and the x. Um, I did look in the score key and again they like to do what I like to do and that is choose the, the slow one. So we'll leave that one as x uh, because it's the slow one and we'll add 80 to the slow one and now we have the speed of the faster second plane. Now it actually gives us time. It says the first plane takes six and two-thirds hours. OK, 
Okay, six and two thirds hours. And the second plane takes four hours. It says find the rate of each. Now let's first turn this into an improper fraction. I like to, so 1820 over three. Let's do that, okay? Now what is distance? Distance is rate times time, hey! So we can say 20 over three times x, and then this one is gonna be four times the quantity x plus 80. And then what we know is that it is the same distance. All right, so I don't think I need to go any further here. We have two equations now that represent the distance of each plane, and now we can set these equal to each other, and it's just a matter of solving for x. All right, Whew, we're past the toughest ones, and then you are up to a checkup. So make sure you score and correct and understand what you're doing on those problems. And um, there are three story problems. And I'm looking at question number 10 on the checkup. It's similar to these, where if you set up a little chart like this, hopefully it'll help. I think I'll make a video. I did get a, um, a tip that this was a hard problem. So try to do it, it is a checkup. But if you get it wrong and you need a tip, we'll talk about it in one more video.